Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello, and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. My name is Connor McKenna. And I'm Carl Stout. And today, we are back from a very brief, unfortunate hiatus, because, well, scheduling things when you're across, you know, halfway across the world from each other can be a bit difficult sometimes, so... Yeah. yeah. But now we're covering Iron Fist 7. <laughs> which That's doesn't right. Which really have a title on the cover. No, not at all. It's the first time I think they didn't do that. Uh, we do have a repeat customer, though, on the cover. Yep. Kumbala Bay, dressed in pink and blue, which I never saw before. With a purple collar. Which is really weird, but whatever. And Iron Fist is punching him with the Iron Fist activated, and it looks like he's breaking rocks off Kumbala Bay or something. But yeah, it's not doing much. And no, and he's even saying no one can kill Kambala Bay. And he's got a sword raised, he's about to hit him. It's a pretty good cover, solid. Eh. I could go without the pink. Yeah, I could go without a lot of things in this cover. Yeah? I'm going to say it's the weakest so far. Like, out of all of them? Oh, out of the Iron Fist run of the seven issues. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, what what other problems do you have with the cover? Oh, just the way the whole fist is striking with, like, these weird fire streamers coming off of it and the fact that he's throwing a left, but if you look at the fire trail from his hand, it looks like he threw it from the inside of his left foot, which yeah. makes no sense whatsoever. And so, uh, the, the lack of nose on Iron Fist, is it like that mask is too tight. I do not think this is a Gil Kane cover. It doesn't look very much like the other ones, really. Again, it's not signed. Yeah. All right, according to uh, CGC, anyways, this cover was done by Ron Wilson and Al Migram. And uh, I do think they have past histories in the book. I think filling in a couple issues. But... uh, Again, still not a John Byrne cover. I believe number eight is... uh, The first one? The first one. John actually takes over on the covers. And it's uh, the cover everyone knows. But we'll get to that next time. Yeah. So so let's hop right to the first page. Which is better. Yes. We still have got the same paragraph across the top. Chris Claremont, still the author. John Byrne, still the interior artist. Frank Cheramonte is the inker. Joe Rosen is the letterer. Bonnie W. is the colorist. And Archie Goodwin is now the editor. What happened to Marv? See you, Marv. And we have a very interesting first page. That's awesome. It's a forced perspective from behind the executioner's head so we have the top of his bald head at the bottom of the page his arms raised above his head holding the sword and in between his head and those hands we see iron fist with his bare neck prepared as two thugs hold back the mighty collar (laughs) yes without the collar he is powerless colleen helpless in the background going for her sword Angar the Screamer in the upper right-hand corner above the words Iron Fist must die. And Master Khan across the top, arms spread wide. With like a red cloud behind him. And the... so the Flames. Yeah, the color effect on his robes are yellow and they turn into flames pretty quickly and cover Mm -hmm. like the bottom of the page in sort of a circle and it looks really good. Yep, it's a good... Good opening page. You can't argue with that. Yeah. So, um, that's what's happening. On to the next page. So, yeah, Iron Fist is about to get executed, but then he decides to break this guy's knee. 
Now, he apparently is still weakened from the mind meld he yeah. did with Colleen and comments that he can still barely stand and he's as helpless as a newborn babe. But he does summon the strength using a knee stomp and then a elbow smash to the midsection of Green Arrow and then a yeah. uh, shoulder toss. <laughs> it really does look like him. He has, like, the mustache and everything. Oh, he's got everything going on. He completely looks like the guy. Or or should I say, what was the other thing? Warlord? Was that um, the one? The I, Viking guy who looked exactly like Green Arrow in DC? I have no idea. I've never heard of him. No? you got to look that up, you warlord. Just a loincloth with a sword on the belt and a helmet with wings on it, but looked 100% like green arrow and people used to make jokes on that all the time he was called warlord i believe but anyway so he hip tosses green arrow face smashes the other goon who's holding him thinks he's doing pretty well but green arrow gets back up and does the whole pistol whip to the back of the head sending iron fist down to the ground and now our bald-headed gray colored executioner again is standing over iron fist with his sword and he's about to end his life when colleen springs to action stuffing her sword up underneath his ribs as hard as she can sending him down to the ground saying you're lucky that this is i'm attacking you with a, a sheathed sword or else you'd surely be dead and iron fist is almost in shock still on the ground looking up at all of this Heart of the Dragon, Colleen. I mean, I'm pretty sure before Mind Mel, Colleen would have just killed these people. Yes. Um, because I think she's killed people before, even. Like those cultists back in the day, the cult of Karakai or whatever, I'm pretty sure she killed a few of those guys. I don't know if they ever commented on that or not. But stuff was going down in that fight. Yeah. So, now Iron Fist is back on his feet, and they're standing back to back. Him and Colleen. Yes, sorry. They're (laughs) quickly surrounded by goons, and Master Khan is not happy at Angar. He's never really happy. (laughs) True. Could be that bun on the top of his head is too tight. Yeah. But basically, he's disgusted. He was Angar assured him on his life that Colleen could not be broken. She was their complete puppet, and obviously that didn't work. Yep. So Angar is pretty much pleading with the master. I'll make this right. Iron Fist and Colleen are kind of arguing because Colleen is not too happy with the mind meld that took place, even though it saved her. Uh, she's not too happy with it. Uh, some implications are done later, which are just like, oof. Yeah. But basically, she says, I'm going to take care of the, these guards. You've been in my head. You know I can do this. You need to go after Khan. And then we have a fantastic, fantastic, great little action sequence in one panel across the bottom of this page. Yeah. Where Iron Fist is actually six different body forms in a different color, five of them, which I like showing like past tense of him just mowing through some guards as he's trying to get to Khan. And then if that panel wasn't good enough, the very next page, three quarters of this page is one huge panel of Colleen doing the same thing with her sword going through three times the amount of guards. Yep, and it's still sheathed, but she is being the poop out of these people still, so... Yep. Hitting them in the throat and stuff, all that jazz. And we end with Angar calling her Chicky. Yep, Angar and Colleen facing off on the bottom panel. And also interesting that their their figure forms are bleeding into the top panel. Mm. Some great artistic and there's stuff a, there's <laughs> going a nice on here. Kurosawa referen- uh, reference there as well, which I just wanted to point out because I like Kurosawa. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? Filthy, disdainful plebeians. No taste. Yes. 
I just actually posted a video, or I didn't post it. I shared a video on Facebook this morning yeah. on my personal page that's almost a shot for shot of, I think it's a, is it a few dollars more or a fistful of dollars? Yeah. Lined up right next to scenes from Yo Jimbo. Yeah, well, and how, fistfuls of and how much, Right. Yeah. I mean, apparently even Clint Eastwood said after he read the script, this is just like Yojimbo. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's funny because Yojimbo was inspired by Westerns, and then Yojimbo got remade in two-way Western, so both were good. Mm-hmm. Yes, they're both excellent films. Yeah, I recommend watching both. I'll put yes. links in the show notes, obviously. Woohoo! Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> a, a, tan- a tangent that went somewhere. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It wasn't just another... Ghost Rider tangent, which we need to do at some point in the episode, otherwise it will be weird. But anyway, I'm sure I'm sure it'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> so Colleen and Anger are facing off, rather, and Anger is pretty much just running his mouth, saying, "That's it. He's just gonna blow her mind away." And she's like, "Like you did with my father. He was a kind, decent soul, Angar, and you turned him into a vegetable. Those are the breaks, hun." In a second or two, you'll know just how your old man feels. And, Colleen, we have a scene from the back where it looks like she unsheaths her sword and yells, Kaya. Mm -hmm. He's like, nice try, baby, but you missed. I didn't feel a thing. And then it's a scene of the empty sheath in her left hand. She's actually crying, saying, most people never do at first. I didn't miss Angar. And then we see a close-up of the sword with blood trickling down it. Yep. And then we have a great shot of Angar just going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Angar dies. Or and... does he? Because I believe he does show up again. Oh, man. I don't I mean, think he stays dead here. I don't dislike I... Angar, but well, at least he tried to kill him. I mean, I, I like that he gets comeuppance messing with these people but i don't i don't think he shows up again for like another 20 years but i do i do think he reappears later now we have a really uh unexciting interlude in my personal opinion yeah that's this whole next page of really misty misty night out in the middle of the desert which looks good oh yeah at 5 a.m practicing pulling out her gun from her holster and shooting tin cans in the desert. And uh, the only thing I think this whole two-page interlude, if not three, is it two or three? Two-page uh, interlude two-page. proves is that uh, Jaron Hogarth is effing slime. He's just a scumbag. Let's He's just be honest like... here. Like... He's... And I think they were trying to push the romantic thing here with the whole Misty Night. I don't know what's going on since I've met Danny, but they don't really take it any further. We'll do very well. And then uh, Slimebag admits apparently that if Danny does die, since he is the last inheritance, which he technically isn't... um, Dun, dun, dun. Because uh, he still has that sister. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, she is you know, in a pod in some plant planet, possibly dead. So. Yeah, but the lawyer don't know that. Uh, when this thing was written, you know, when Danny's dad was alive working in America, he didn't know that. Did the authors even know that? <laughs> like... <laughs> Because when she came back, I was like, oh, I thought you were pretty dead, but... And then she left, and she may as well be dead, because she's never been... Spoilers, guys! Sorry! That's a whole other miniseries we're going to cover later, probably in one long show. Yeah, we'll do the miniseries in one episode. It's only three issues. Oh, the, and uh, here I'll just put in quickly, sorry, um, with... No problem. That's what we're here for. With our Iron Fist <laughs> Living Weapon coverage, we'll just cover that later on, like, we normally do with all the other stuff because we figure if anything super relevant comes up in Power Man and Iron Fist, we'll deal with it, but we don't think it will, so... Yeah, well, definitely, if if stuff pops up in the new series that relates to the old series, 
Not only will we comment on it, we will tell you guys what issues it's from. Yes. And there's also, like, there's a couple of great recaps of Living Weapon on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So I can link those in the show notes. And that will will get you up to speed if you aren't able to read the series before the new one comes out. But we will be slowly covering it all. Yes. (laughs) We've got five years ahead of us. (laughs) Already planned. (laughs) As we said, we are picking, we're picking and choosing from Pam and Iron Fist, though. But feel free to request any issues that we don't cover. So, yeah. Because that's a lot of issues to do in a row of Power Man and Iron Fist. Like... Oh, come on. It's only 78 or oh, 77. God, it would only take us like a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to double it up. Yep. Oh. Well, like 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 we talked about, if it's a three or four page continuing story through multiple issues, we'll hit it all at once and just blow yeah. through it. So, back from this whole, if Danny, if Danny dies, the whole fortune goes to charity and some of it to him, which then, of course, causes Misty to say, well, if anything happens to him, you're a dead man. Because I don't know if she if she's in love or just saw dollar signs if Danny stays alive. <laughs> and we don't have to worry about Jern not being a jerk in the show, because, yeah, Jern in the show is evil as well, so... I'm still not caught up, so I can't say anything. I still have not watched. So we go back to Danny now chasing after the master. After. And, and don't make fun of me. <laughs> and he's he's running through the castle. He can barely keep up. Makes a comment that he's not surprised if he's walking through walls like a ghost. From And from out of nowhere, Brock big giant fist against the back of Danny's head and at laughing first, at him pretty much you think did Danny wind up in Australia he's got hit in the back of the head for no reason <laughs> he's walking around then some guy hit him in the back of the head I just thought wait are we in the valley now but no he's still in it turns out it's Kumbala Bay who that's yeah. not an Australian thing by the way I got hit in the back of the head for no reason in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania it's, it's been happening a lot here recently, I'll say that much. Oh, the, apparently the new trend here is uh, people slashing women's faces with knives. Oh, that sounds charming. Like, <laughs> complete strangers are walking up to people, slashing people in the face and booking. I could continue this tangent with something that just happened in Dublin, but I don't think we should, because <laughs> it's going to oh. go really crazy really quick. So. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so... Kambala Bay makes another appearance and oh, even oh, comments yeah. that there's no princess here to save him now. You were going to say? Oh, no, I was just going to say I'll tell you after we record. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to have the listeners wondering. Yeah, that's true. Well, they can contact us if they're that interested. <laughs> <laughs> so, after Kambala introduces himself, we are blessed Mm-hmm. With a full page of nine equally sized panels of Iron Fist going to town on his fat ass. <laughs> it's okay. And ba- what? Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, it's okay. Um... That's it. We're going to fight. I'm getting on a plane. I'll see you in 37 hours. All right. Bring it. No, uh, it. I just feel like... It, do you, the, do the you at least in, and do you at least enjoy the smack? Oh, I enjoy it. in the top three panels. I definitely enjoyed all it. Flows well. The poses are great. I just think it's a bit less detailed than some of the better fight scenes in this oh, it's, style. Artistically wise, it's definitely rushed. Yeah. Without a doubt, the detail is not there. Uh, Kambala Bay almost looks different in every panel. Yeah. But I love what Danny is saying. He's just like, you know, I am the finest warrior, his champion. He's like, big deal, as he's blocking his first throw. You're a bruiser gone to seed, Kabbalah, with delusions of grandeur. A man of, a man of fair martial arts technique, above average strength, and a way above average mouth. I, on the other hand, is the best there is. That line will later be stolen by Wolverine. Thank you, Chris Claremont. Yeah, by the good book. Thank you, 
Christ. <laughs> We haven't had a good book appearance in a while. It's been a bit too long, but it's going to go into overload when a certain cannot cat appears at some point, so, yeah. And then we go into the Master's Chambers, where he's summoning things from Dark Lords and calls these brother and summons thee to Earth and Lord of the Damned! Kabbalah Bay comes smashing through the wall with Iron Fist right behind him going, Master Khan! Yeah, Iron Fist really beat the crap out of Kabbalah this time. Like, no problem whatsoever. And so then something interesting happens. Uh, Master Khan, being a Sorcerer Supreme of himself, even uses the term need to use a Supreme spell. So, I don't know if the Book of Spells is like a Taco Bell menu or something, wow. but... First, he hits him with the bolts of Bashir. Yep. Then he hits him with the flames of Flatine. And Iron Fist, even though he feels like he's being burned, he seems to be absorbing the power yeah. and almost redirecting it. They don't really, unfortunately, go any further than that with mm -hmm. these two things. But the comment is there that... <clears throat> sorry, that he's being attacked by magic and it's not really working. Then we have a very interesting close-up on Khan's eye and mm. it is very snake-like. See, there's a lot of untapped material in these old issues that writers could use. It'd be nice to see. Cause, uh, oh, there definitely. Hasn't, there hasn't been much Iron Fist magic stuff, per se. They, uh, I want Iron Fist and Doctor Strange to have an ongoing. That'd be great. Well, they did in the, the whole Last Avengers run, where they had to team up, and then there was yeah, the Daredevil sucked. thing. It was awful. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> it was so bad. Like, it's... Well, they, they touched upon... If anything, the back and forth talking yeah. between Danny and Doctor Strange was the best part of those issues. Oh, yeah, definitely. And um, I just want but, Danny to be the new uh, Wong. Is that his name? That was his assistant. Yeah. Yeah. Who I want turned Danny out to, to be, be like Wong. who turned out to be like a horned a horned bull guy who was just had an illusion cast over him to make him look like a small bald Asian butler. It's probably the one of the more normal things that's happened in Doctor Strange, though. Really. So. Yep. Yeah. And I then, actually yeah. need to pick, I really want to pick up the Doctor Strange stuff in hardcover because I really don't know enough about him. And if you talk to a diehard Doctor Strange fan, yeah. yeah. That what they say, you're just like, How am I missing this stuff? What 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 was I buying that I wasn't picking this up? Because it's mm. just like so much went on on Doctor Strange is just so out there and so cutting edge that was going on and so many people missed it. Yeah. He's always just been there for me. Like, yeah. As in, like, I've liked him, but and he's always, but he always pops up in, like, any hero book I read. He's popped up at least twice. Oh, yeah. Like, he popped up everywhere. If, if something magic was going down... He's the guy. Everybody would call Doctor Strange. He'd show up, solve the problem, and leave. And then they'd and try I... and call him again, and he wouldn't be at home. <laughs> so, like, that always <laughs> yeah, he, happens. He was in a different dimension or something. Like, you yeah. always, you know, just Wong's there going, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. So... He's out. So, Iron Fist gets, uh, the next spell that he casts on him is the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. And I'm pretty sure Sidorak's an actual thing mentioned, like, a lot when it comes to magic in Marvel. Wasn't Juggernaut... Didn't he have something to do with, like, a crystal of Sidorak or something? I can't remember the jewel in the Juggernaut, but I honestly think Marvel had a literally book... Yeah. ...that writers could look upon about stuff that had been referenced, because they were actually trying to build a history in the whole magic realm, too, so mm. it would equal out across all their books. Yeah. Marvel did a lot of stuff like that, and Marvel was an unusual company because of that. Marvel tried, this is going all the way back to the 60s, were trying to outline their entire world. They were trying to make it all one, and they did things like that. And I mean, yeah. they literally wanted artists, all the artists, to draw the Marvel way. Yeah. So, yeah. kind kind of cool, kind of restrictive at the same mm. time, 
but then you look at the at the books back in this era and you can't really say that one looked like crap because yeah. everybody was drawing the same, same way. style, yeah. And I mean, even DC did it too, to an extent. Now we, we're we back. Now that uh, Iron Fist is bound, we pretty much have, as they like to say in The Incredibles, the hero goes and the villain goes into his monologue basically explaining his origin and why he's doing what he's doing. And it almost really doesn't make sense to me because other than iron fist saving that princess's life, the one time, mm. if the guy just slowed his plan by two weeks, iron fist would have moved on to other things and he could have kept going. <laughs> but it turns out the king of this weird, what is it? Halwans. Um, Hal, Hal Halwans, yeah. The, the, the king of Halwan wanted Khan to work for him because he was an expert in magic. Khan did not want to do it because he was more of a peaceful philosopher type. The king kidnapped his entire family, tortured his youngest daughter, who then in turn died on the rack. This killed everything in him, turned his soul black, and now all he wants is revenge. So he wants to kill the princess, and he wants to gain the throne. I'm guessing he already killed the king. I mean, this was, uh, when the king did this, he mentions that this is when people, like, fought with swords. Yeah. So he's very old. The princess is obviously a, well, sort of innocent descendant of uh, the king that I'm assuming he blew away. <laughs> But, but here's here's the part that really makes no sense. He's got Iron Fist completely at his whim. He can literally pick up a dagger and cut his throat. Even comments that he can just take a knife, cut his throat, end it now. But instead of doing this, I'm going to use more magic, and I open this portal to give you what you want, and he opens a portal right in front of him to Kun Lung, right into UT's chamber, where Yu Chi looks like he's cruising porn on the internet and he's shocked. <laughs> what, what, what? what? Iron looks, Fist. His office looks sort of like mundane. It looks like it's from the 80s. Oh, it's wicked boring. That's something yeah. you would think of in this giant, you know, castle with all this Asian flair thrown around. And, you know, you got a boring desk with a leather reclining chair. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then he lays out the facts that. You know, I'll, you know, I'll wash my hands. You can walk through this portal, go back to Kunlun, and you'll never see me again. Just stay out of my business. I'll stay out of yours, which just seems a little odd here. But again, it's a comic book. I'm thinking uh, the way I perceived it is, I guess I didn't think about it too much, but um, maybe uh, maybe this works for Khan better than killing Iron Fist. Maybe this just sort of occurred to him now. I don't know. Is there any? But he also breaks the news that, oh, by the way, UT's a dirty backstabbing bastard. Well, maybe he has it in for UT. <laughs> maybe he just wants to set Iron Fist on him. Well, I mean, the with, fact that he can with, open up a portal there. With the comment that the ninja was his making, or one of his guys, and we all, what was the ninja's master plan? To destroy Kun Lun. Right. Yeah. So for some yeah. reason that I'm in the, in the ninja was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old also. So I think there might be some get to Kun Lun and take that over too in the back of the master's mind. And he thought Iron Fist is a threat, but now he realizes that he can use Iron Fist to, well, put Kun Lun into disarray, I guess, if he gets into right. the UT. Because he feeds all this information to Iron Fist at UT was dirty, UT took your father's crown. With this you huge should... shit-eating grin, I might add. Oh, yeah. Like, he looks and, really and, smug. And there's one panel where Iron Fist like, looks like he's about to cry from this yeah. information that the Master's giving him, and that how they, they knew you were coming, they saw that you were coming, they watched the wolves tear your mother apart and did nothing when they could have stopped it. Yeah. And this was all UT's plan. 
Yep, so and needless to say, yeah. this pisses Danny off. UT didn't want Danny to have any parents when he reached the Kunlun. Anyone that could, like, influence him, I guess. And we, we've always known UT was shady. Yes. Um, but this sort of seals the deal. I mean, I guess it's like if you trust the evil goatee guy, but it's, you know, he's telling the truth to mess with Danny, so it makes sense. So he, he's offering him this, this you know, open open gateway. You don't have to wait eight years to go back to Kunlun. You can step yeah. through this portal right now. You're there. Back in the mind, I think he's like, and when you get there, tear that crap out of the place because I'll be there soon <laughs> to take it over. I think that's going on in the background, even though he doesn't outright say it. Yeah. And pretty much Danny, one, chews out UT through the portal and then uses the Iron Fist to destroy the portal, which causes a bigger problem. <laughs> The whole place done blows up in the castle, blows a hole in the wall, opens up a completely different type of portal, almost a black hole type effect. Everyone's holding on for dear life as furniture, rocks are getting sucked in, and Danny, being the hero, still tries to save Khan, telling him to reach for my hand, you're almost there, reach, blast it. But Khan can't hold on, falls into the portal, don't worry, I'll be back. (laughs) <laughs> and Danny's just left there going, my God, Khan. Khan also references D- Demons of Danak, which is another actual magic thing in Marvel, I'm pretty sure. Um, if we, I want to rewind a bit. I like this um, line that UT says. You know, Danny's like, have I not known you at all for ten years? And UT just says, I am what I am, Iron Fist. I can be no less. So he pretty much just admits, yep. <laughs> But, you know, that's just me, man. I'm just well, like, and then he comes right back, and I am what I am, Dragon Lord. I don't know what to believe anymore, UT. <laughs> Truth or falsehood? Eight years, you're toast. <laughs> so, the reason Iron Fist smashes the portal is because he has commitments to the people on Earth. And he wouldn't yes. be much of a man if he just left his commitments... And, like, he's been down this revenge spree road before. It ended with, you know, just, well, big runs around the loop, I guess. He didn't even kill the guy, so. But, yeah, he has responsibilities to Colleen, Lee, uh, Raphael Scarf, (laughs) (laughs) Misty, and, of course, his best friend, which we've been told a million times. Um, I can't actually remember his name. Is it Al? Who, the, the Irish guy? Yeah, with his weird symbiotic sideburns in that panel. Oh, God, I can't even remember his name now. <laughs> but we know he's Iron Fist's best friend, and Danny's best friend, but he doesn't know hey, that Iron Fist is Danny, I think. So. They're tight. Alan. It's Alan. Yeah, but, Alan McGregor or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, but these, these pages, when he punches the portal and stuff, and it's sucking everyone in, it looks really awesome. And that portal is so strong, it's sucking back his collar. <laughs> oh, wow. That's really strong. <laughs> yes, the uh, interesting stuff. And again, out of nowhere, in this ancient castle, we have a simple wooden desk with a lamp on it flying through the air. <laughs> <laughs> not, not my Ikea desk. No. <laughs> Took me four hours to put that together. Stupid instructions in Swedish. Oh, God. So then we cut to a peaceful mountainside. No, it, it's a beautiful morning, the land lying still and quiet after the holocaust of the night before. Most of the survivors of Khan's army are long gone, preferring the desert to Hawani prison, and those that are left are preparing to leave. It's strange to be free, to wake in the morning and know that you're not living one of Angar Mindstorm scenarios. It's kind of like being reborn. So this is Colleen, and she's putting on a uh, gi martial arts outfit, whatever, and she whips out a sword as Iron Fist comes behind her. Well, out she doesn't bushes. know it's Iron Fist yet. She's like, <laughs> get out of the bushes, because apparently he's peeping. <laughs> and Iron Fist has this huge groan in his face as he's just come out of the bushes. <laughs> With the, the I saw your boobies face. <laughs> 
And then she pretty much accuses him of rape. Um, to, to, yeah, to put it to, to put it bluntly, because of the here we go. Let's just read this one panel. I know who you are, Danny. How well I know all the hopes, fears, loves, hates, needs, feelings, thoughts, all the myriad factors that make up. Daniel Thomas Rand. I know them all, just like you know me because of that mind meld. Meld, what a laugh. I'd use another word for it, and I could kill you for what you did to me. I mean, I guess he did literally force his will on her, so... (laughs) But, you know, he did save her life in the process, so... Right. He had a... He was trying to snap her out of it. This is how he thought it would work, and he didn't even... Wasn't expecting what happened to happen. Yeah, he was like, whoa! Alright. Now, he's got all of her memories, too. And I'm... Fist is like... And Mm. and I think this is might what have killed the possibility of a relationship between these two is not what he did, but now the fact that they know every single inch of each other's life it's pretty much made them like a brother sister scenario. Like they've grown up together their entire lives. Like a really weird brother sister scenario anyway. Right. Um, So I think this is, might be where they're going, where they're just tight friends from now on. It never, it never goes any further than that. Other than apparently them holding hands to go catch the plane. And Danny says like, you know, do it, kill me. I won't stop you. But he said, he does point out that, um, it was either that or he killed her and he couldn't do that. So, and then Colleen mentions that if she killed Iron Fist, it'd be like killing a part of herself. And then Iron Fist goes, friends? And holds out his hand. And, yep, they make up. And they go off to catch a plane. And the last panel there is quite nice. Yep. So they're walking off. They're just black silhouettes, mountains in the background and stuff. Um, May, May Day 1976. The nightmare is over. Next, a look at Danny Rand, the man behind the mask. Mystery and death in Chinatown. Don't miss the gang who strike like tigers in the night. And introducing Chucka, crime lord of New York. So, what do you think about that issue? Definitely interesting. A uh, th- Well, they, they wrapped up the whole con thing, which is nice. So now we're going to move on from there. So, that, yeah, that's it's essentially like the second story arc concluded. Right. Because it's been two so far. And, and uh, all in all, it was all good. It wasn't bad, which is always a plus. <laughs> yeah, that's a, generally a plus. But no, I, I I give it a good solid. It was it was great stuff. Yeah, the it was artwork good. was the artwork was great. The, the story writings, for the most part, was on par. A little weird bits here and there, yeah. but show me a story that isn't. I mean, yeah. Now, I, with Colleen and Iron Fist, I wish they um, went into this mind meld thing a bit more, because I haven't seen it brought up that much after this issue, but it seems like it would be a pretty big deal. Um, I'm, tr- cause... I'm tr- trying to remember if they actually wind up communicating with each other mentally because of this. For some reason, something saying that that is mentioned a couple times. Because oh, I just remember in the Power Man series and all the other stuff, it was either the focus with Iron Fist is either with Iron Fist and Power Man or with Iron Fist and Misty. Colleen's sort mm-hmm. of um, slide it to the back. Oh, yeah, Colleen's in Power Man and Iron Fist. Colleen is a major minor player. Yeah, which is a shame in my opinion. But... Yeah. Although I haven't read the Doors of the Dragon miniseries, but I have no idea if it's, it's any good. It's good. Yeah? I liked it, but you hate Misty, so you might not like it. I like Colleen, though. I hate <laughs> Misty. So, yeah, I, I agree. It was a good issue. Um, in fact, it was a really good issue. It was a it was a satisfying wrap-up to what's been happening. It's not the best issue out of the story arc, but it's definitely a satisfying conclusion with a couple of memorable moments. Um, obviously, the most memorable thing to happen is the mind meld. That's the major event I took out of it anyway. Um, mm-hmm. But now Khan's out of the picture, which leaves now, what? So who leaves... are we still waiting on? Steel Serpent. <laughs> yeah, that that's the only player in the background that hasn't been accounted for yet. And obviously UT as well. 
But yeah, mm-hmm. cool. So you can find this issue in the Marvel Masterworks Volume Two, the Iron Fist Essentials, or your best bet, which is the Iron Fist Epic Collection. I believe it's called Fury of Iron Fist. Um, that'll be the cheapest one. It has good colouring, good pages. Um, yeah, and you can get the single issue for varying prices, I'm sure. Yeah, depending on condition. Yeah. I'd say anywhere from $5 to $45. Yep. Cool. Unless it's CGC, then you're looking at 150 plus. Yeah. Which, yeah. But, um, <laughs> well. But, but, then you, but then you can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, it, it, anyway, um, so, next time we have Tigers of the Night, let's see if that title stays consistent. And until, it's on their jacket. <laughs> until then, may your fist be like unto a thing of iron, so you may punch that pesky portal to that dimension that you came from where some weird guy in a green robe killed your parents, well, orchestrated their deaths. Or, or an Australian robe. bystander in the back of the head. And he might have a question mark on his hood as well, so just watch out for that. All right, peace. Namaste. Iron Fist and all other characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney. And any music or images we use belong to their respective copyright holders. And we do this for fun, so please don't sue us. You can contact us at sonsofthedragonpodcast at gmail.com. Just send us mail, comments, thoughts. Send us anything you want, really, even if it's not about Iron Fist. Um, And if you don't want it read it on the air, just mention that. Um, You can also reach us at Facebook, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon. Our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast. Our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash Sons of the Dragon with hyphens where the spaces are. Our YouTube, Connor Carl, just search Iron Fist Podcast on YouTube and you'll find us real quick. And then there's our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast.wordpress.com. We are also on iTunes. Feel free to rate us there if you rate us less than five stars. Well, just tell us what we're doing wrong and we'll try and improve that. And last but not least, we are on Podcast Garden in the literature section. And thanks to Thomas Tissot for the theme song at the start. And thanks. <laughs>